Welcome, welcome, welcome. All right, we're doing a take two. We're going to see if this one works. <laughs> so if you happen to come on live, I would love for you to come say hi. Put Hello. something in the chat. Uh, I just was live, and then all of a sudden it stopped. So I'm trying to figure out what's going on. But we're going to try that again. So hello, let's try to take two. And hello and welcome. Welcome, welcome. It is Thursday morning, and uh, my name is Tiffany Huckleman, and with Lone Orange, where we help solopreneurs grow their businesses beyond themselves with fewer headaches and more profit. Doesn't that sound wonderful? So, um, if you are a solopreneur, you are absolutely in the right spot. And today we're going to talk about delegation. The delegation is a tricky subject, um, honestly, because you know, when I got into business, I actually got into business saying, I do not want a team. I don't want employees. I don't want to have to work with other people. I don't want to have to manage other people because I'd come from a place where um, I had experience doing that and I just didn't like it. I didn't think it was for me. And so I said, no, don't want any of it. But there came a time where I just couldn't do it all. And I was doing things that I didn't like doing. I wasn't good at them. I didn't do them well, didn't do them fast. And they just weren't things I should be doing. So luckily for me, I had a coach at the time who told me that I needed to start delegating so I would stop being so overwhelmed. Now, I remember that feeling distinctly. I remember feeling paralyzed. I remember feeling like uh, I had a complete loss as to what to do. Like, what did that mean? How was I going to do that? I'd already set my mind saying I was never going to delegate. And now she's telling me I had to, but I honestly could not figure out anything at that stage that I could delegate. Um, so maybe you've had that. I, I, if you are watching this either live or replay, if you've ever had that feeling of Oh my gosh, okay, I should delegate, but ugh, don't know where to start. Maybe kind of paralyzed, maybe kind of stuck. Put that in the chat. I want to know that I'm not the only one. I'm pretty sure I'm not. Pretty sure it's a pretty common feeling, especially for solopreneurs. Like we get into business to do what we love. We don't get into business to do all the things that we didn't realize we were going to have to do to run a business and to keep it going. Um, so what it came from, what that paralyzed feeling came from for me was the feeling of not knowing what to do next. I didn't see a way out. I just thought I was going to be perpetually overwhelmed and kind of that hope was starting to dwindle and I didn't know what to do. So when she told me that I need to start delegate, I said, I, I found actually a journal entry the other day saying, what am I going to delegate? And so I was able to start kind of processing and looking at my business, breaking it down. But here were some of the other thoughts that I had. I thought, well, um, I, at that point I was doing all, I'm trying to see if I can start kind of processing and looking at my I'm trying to make sure I'm down. actually online actually. But here are some of the other thoughts um, that I had. I thought, well, hold on one second. Um, I, at that point I was doing this all is... I'm trying to see Thank you, if Facebook. I can start kind of okay. We're online. <laughs> all right, sorry about that. Um so I was able to kind of look at the parts of my business. And at that point I was doing all graphic design. Um and so I had the thought I can't hire other designers. People were, are paying me and hiring me for my talent, not someone else's. Wrong. <laughs> not true. But that's what I felt. I also felt, well, it would just be easier if I just did it. It's going to be a heck of a lot easier than trying to train someone. Wrong. Not true. The other thought I had is they're not going to do it the same way. And so it's not going to be the same quality that people have come to expect and that I hold my level of quality to my, for my company. Wrong. Not true. And here's why I can tell you that because fast forward 10 years, I now have designers doing some of my design work, sometimes even better than me, honestly. Um, because I found good designers who will do things the way I want them done and serve my clients super well. So I have greater capacity to really focus on what I do best and let my designers do what they do best. So that was myth number one, that people were paying me for my talent and they would be 
horrified to know that I was having that I had help. That wasn't wasn't true. So that's one thing. It is possible. Yes, I had to work through a lot of thoughts around that and a lot of processes. I even had to make some mistakes. Um, and in a couple weeks, I don't remember if it's next week, the week after, I'm going to actually tell you about a big delegation fail that I had. So make sure you keep an eye out for that one. That's going to be a fun story. <laughs> um, so that was the one thing that people were paying me for my talent and that they would be horrified to find out that they were actually working with someone else. The other thing was the other thought that I had was that it would just be easier than to, for me to do it myself than to train somebody else. That also seems true in the very beginning because it seems like such a monumental task to, um, to start thinking about how you're going to train somebody. But here's what I found is that the more practice I got at that, I got better and better and it got easier and easier. <clears throat> I learned what people needed from me. I learned what kind of instruction. I learned what kind of oversight they needed. And now it is so much easier for me to train someone and get the work done faster than when I do it myself. So I've learned that that was also false and also a wrong thought that I had. So that was thought number two that it was going to be easier for me to do it than to train somebody else. Thought number three that I had was that they weren't going to do it the same way or the quality was going to suffer. That my brand identity was going to be diluted because I had these other people who weren't doing it as good as me. Again, another wrong one because fast forward, I have developed kind of standards of quality. I've developed where there, where it was important, I've developed ways that we do things, um, criteria for how we do things, steps for how we do things so that we are presenting the best work that we as a team can put forward. And so I've been able to maintain that level. And again, sometimes even raise that level of quality that I, I came to expect for myself because I brought people in. That's what delegation can do for you. It can um, increase your capacity to help more people. It can uh, get back time for you to be able to do what you do best. And, and it'll get you time back to be able to focus on things like your family and self-care, the things that you need to do for yourself. And your brand reputation can actually grow and improve because of the team that you're developing. You're not now trying to run around like a crazy person trying to get all the, it all done. So even though it might feel right now that delegation oh, is where you, where you need to be, but oh my gosh, it just feels too scary, too paralyzing, too stuck, get it. Totally get it but it doesn't have to be that way. Delegation is crucial for solopreneurs to be able to grow. You're not, you will not be able to grow without some sort of delegation. I promise because there's only so much time and energy that you have to give and there's only so much that you'll be able to do. It also though, I know feels like a gigantic stepping stone to go from being a solo complete solo, to delegating and getting some help. And while it can, it's not gonna be easy, it doesn't have to be hard either. Like I think we can, we're really good at making things harder than, at least I am, really good at making things harder than they need to be. So th the process of delegating doesn't need to be that hard. And so that's why, so if you're in this place where you are ready to delegate, you wanna delegate anyway, maybe not ready, but you wanna delegate and but you're not sure what to do next then i want to invite you to join me for a free five-day challenge that i'm doing on january 24th to the 28th called delegate it exclamation point <laughs> delegate it it's going to be workshop style like we are going to do the work together in 30 to 45 minute blocks we're going to do the work together you're going to figure out exactly what you can be delegating in your business what the next right thing is for you to delegate and how to do it successfully so that it doesn't have to be this mystery or that it doesn't have to be this gigantic headache. We're going to break it down into bite-sized pieces and you're going to walk away knowing exactly what to do next to start delegating to get the right people. Or maybe it's not people. Little, uh, a teaser. Maybe it's not necessarily people, but there are ways to get things off your plate so that you can be more effective and efficient and that your business can grow. So if delegation is on your 2022 radar, 
you, then you've got to join me. You must join me. This is going to be a workshop that will give you so many great um, nuggets, so much great insights. Break it down. You're going to have a plan. This isn't going to be like another, I mean, I've seen a lot of events where they talk a lot, but there isn't a lot of content, a lot of value. You're going to walk away with a plan. You're going to know exactly what to do because we're going to break it down. I'm going to help it be not scary for you and you're going to know exactly what to do. Even if, okay, I also want to say if you are ready to hire a team, then great, then absolutely be here. If you're not ready to hire a team, it's this is for you too. This is for you to even be able to see what you can do. Um you know, for whatever reason, maybe you feel like you're, you can't afford it yet. You're not big enough yet. You don't have enough clients. I get that. And there comes a time when the timing is right, but that doesn't mean that you can't be thinking ahead or you can't be looking for ways that you can be more efficient, ways that you don't see right now. We're going to talk about all of that. So whether you have been in business for years and just want to get better at delegating and do a better job whether you um, are just kind of at that, that tipping point where you're ready to start delegating and but you're not sure what to do next, this is for you. Even if you are not quite ready to do much delegating or hire a team, this is still for you because now is the time to start planning for what you will delegate when the time is right. So I will put the, um, the link below. Make sure you sign up. Sign up, sign up, sign up. January 24th to the 28th, uh, we'll be meeting 11 a.m. Central Time each day. Um, for, I would say about 30 to 45 minutes each day. And like the, we're going to do the work together. So it's not um, in the past I've done, you know, okay, here's the content. Now go do your work. We're going to, I'm going to give you the content and we're going to workshop it together right there. So you're going to get a lot more done with a lot less time. Um, so it's going to be awesome. And please, please, please make sure to share this with p other people who, you know, need to delegate this coming year, because this is going to be so crucial. Every solopreneur I truly believe needs to at least think this through to some level and look for ways to get things off their plate so they can do what's best. All right, my friends, I can't wait to see you in the delegated challenge. I will definitely be here next week on it's December 23rd. I know it's right before Christmas, but it'll be kind of the holiday edition, I guess. Uh, and I will look forward to seeing you then. Have a great week. Bye.